Joining me right now is AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter. We're going to break things down. And you know, John, right when you look at the satellite picture, you can see this is getting better organized. We were talking with Alex Da Silva uh, earlier. This is going to be taking the 60 miles per hour, but you're starting to get that S-band shape, right? And that's an indication that things are getting better organized around Aaron. Correct. You can also see that the uh, the thunderstorm uh, and these the thunderstorms and these yellows and reds are starting to become more uh, consolidated around the entire periphery of the storm. So that's again another indication that this is on the way to some significant intensification. And it's slowing down. Yesterday yep. at this point, it was in the 20s. Now it's 17. Right. What does that tell us? The wind shear is beginning to lessen. What I find scary, John is that where you take Aaron is now, look where it's going in that area north of the islands. And notice what we have on our key here, that's where the weakest wind shear is. And remember what is wind shear? That's changing wind speed and direction as you go from the ground up through the atmosphere. And so when there's more wind shear, that can disrupt the storm circulation. Less wind shear, which is exactly where it's headed, that's an area, especially with warm water, where it's favored for intensification. Now, John, you know, I love history, and I know you agree with me on this yeah. graphic. It provides value, and here's where it provides value. Yesterday, when we looked at where Aaron was and where uh, storms have tracked in that area during the month of August and September, there wasn't a single track, not one track, coming into Florida. But Aaron's not gained any north latitude here. So history says Florida is still not ruled out. That's right, Aaron is down in at this particular location. This is the uh, US East Coast, Florida in through here, North Carolina in through here, right along the coast. And so you can see that there are some tracks near Aaron's current location that do go back toward Florida, which is why we've not issued an all clear anywhere yet for direct rain and wind impacts from Aaron, because while most of these tracks do what we call recurve, which is they uh, move back, the storms end up moving out to sea east of the Carolinas, there still are some tracks that get back to the east coast and that's why we continue to be monitoring this very vigilantly. John, I did the math. Current now, it's about 10% go toward the, uh, have uh, impacts along the east coast. But yeah. here's the thing, when you look at the historical tracks, a lot of the storms start taking a north-northwest track very soon. The longer Aaron doesn't do that, the, the more concerned we get. Now, we've been talking about this as well. We, really, the fork in the road, the big fork in the road is Sunday in the Monday. That's the time period when the upper level flow across this part of the Atlantic Ocean and, um, and northward should enable Aaron to take a more northern course. And once that occurs, that's when the risk for Florida, we would feel a lot more comfortable about reducing the risk greatly for Florida up towards South Carolina. Still got to watch that North Carolina northbound, especially North Carolina. But that torn to the north and the timing of it is going to be very critical. The second fork in the road is Wednesday, John. Now, yep. it appears, it appears that there's enough of a dip in the jet stream in, in the Northeast by Wednesday to start turning this away from the United States. You, however, do have a little bit of a concern during this time frame. We do because the way in which this dip in the jet stream sets up, the timing of it and just how deep it is is going to be really critical. Because if it sets up in this manner, then it can actually act as a kicker and cause the storm to be directed east so there would be limited risk of rain or wind impacts along the East Coast. However, if this storm is, a, if this little jet stream disturbance is a little bit shaped a little bit differently or its timing is a little bit different, then that can actually draw the storm closer. That's why we still have this concern about the eventual impact risk here along the East Coast. And in fact, in the last 24 hours, some of these different computer models, and these are just a sampling of some of the many computer models. We look at 190 different forecast models here at AccuWeather. Some of them have tracks further to the west, closer to the North Carolina coast, which is exactly what AccuWeather hurricane experts have been concerned about. Okay, John, what's the change in the wind uh, of the I-Path here? I understand map discussion has just ended. 
What are we going to be changing with this? We're just going to be making some small adjustments. Our team is doing this now to bring the uh, storm track a little bit ever so closer to the south and west here. So a bit of a closer approach to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands can increase rain and wind impacts there. And we're also going to bring the edge of our window here right to the North Carolina coast. And remember, our meteorologists are specifically drawing the left and right sides of our window of movement here because these are an indication of how far west or east we think the storm could be located. So that means that, again, that's why we've been talking about the concerns along especially the North Carolina coastline. We're going to be bringing that window of movement just a little bit further to the west there. John, we're going to hold this number for now. 70% chance, given history. But remember, history says 10 per, a 90% chance of no impacts. We, that's why we're going 70 now. We may have to take that down of no direct impacts. We, we may if there continues to be concerns about the storm being closer to the coast. But again, that's 70 percent chance that there's not rain or wind impacts along the east coast. There's certainly going to be big surf and rip currents as we talked about. But here's the place that we've got to watch, especially the North Carolina coastline where it sticks out there. That's where we have a medium risk. And that medium risk is a 30 percent risk of direct rain and wind impacts the way AccuWeather hurricane experts exclusively assess that right now. Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter, thanks for breaking it down, John.